In today's video, I'm going to show you how to set up a Windows 7 bootable USB stick using a tool called Rufus. It just takes a couple of steps. So let's take a look. We're at our Windows 10 desktop. I'm going to open up my browser and the website that you want to go to is rufus.ie. I'll make sure I link that in the description below. Uh, what we're going to do over here is we're just going to scroll down a little bit here and we're going to be downloading the tool here. Rufus 3.21 is the latest one that's out. I'm going to click on that and it's going to automatically download. It's not a very big file. It's just under 1.5 megs. We'll go ahead and click on that to open it. If you get prompted like this, just say yes. Now it wants to do an update policy if you wanted to check for updates online. I don't see any issues with this, but if you want, you can say no. I'll say yes to that so it automatically updates. I'm going to minimize my browser so we can take a look at the Rufus window over here. Right now, I don't have any devices plugged in. I'm going to be plugging in this USB uh, Kingston flash drive. I find the Kingston drives and the Patriot drives very reliable. There we go. And I'll make sure I link it in the description if you want to take a look at the hardware I'm using. Uh, so right now for the boot selection, we have the option for non-bootable free DOS or disk ISO image. We're just going to be leaving it as disk ISO image. And then over here on the select section, we can select to download. Now this saves a lot of hassle of you trying to find the ISO. It'll get it for you. So go ahead and select that. All right, so we selected the download in the list and now we're just gonna click on download and it's gonna open up a wizard for us. So inside the wizard, we have the option to select our version. We have the option for Windows 11, 10, 8, 7, and so on down. We're gonna be selecting Windows 7 over here and now we're gonna click on continue. And the next option is the release. So we have SP1, which is the service pack one option we'll select that as well which is the only one there and then we can click on continue and then the addition so the addition that we have in this list is we have ultimate professional or home premium uh, we'll select the ultimate one since that includes everything and then we can click on the continue button so now the last option over here is language the english us is the one that's selected it's the only one that's in here we can go ahead and click on continue now and the architecture will be x64 because we're using a 64-bit desktop now if you have an older desktop you might want to select the x86 that's a 32-bit installation but in most cases the x64 bit is going to be the one that you use if you want to download using your browser you can select this option or you can just click on download and it'll download the file straight from here we'll go ahead and click on that and it just needs to download the image into a location on your pc now it's going to download this iso image which you can delete later it's a fairly big file so uh, you might want to delete that once this is complete. So you select your location. I'm just going to leave it in the default downloads folder and then click on save. And it's going to go ahead and start downloading this file. This could take a minute or two depending on your internet connection. What I'll do is I'll jump over to the next step. Okay, the download is now complete. Under image options, we have two options in here. So we have the standard installation, which is when you're going to be installing it on a PC. And then we have Windows to go. Windows to go is a portable version that, which allows you to install the operating system on USB drive. So you can just plug it into the computer and run it off the USB drive. But in this case, we're going to be using the standard Windows installation. We're going to be leaving everything else as default. So the partition scheme is going to be GPT. Target system is going to be UEFI. And the format options under here, we're going to give it a label. And the label we're going to give this one is I'll just give it Windows 7. You can call it whatever you'd like. And for file system, NTFS is what we have selected. And for cluster size, we're going to be using the default 4096. And the status is ready. All we have to do now is click on the start button and it'll begin to format. We get a warning over here. So once you click on OK, it'll be formatted. If you have anything important on your USB drive, make sure you copy that off. All right, so we'll go ahead and click on OK and it's deleting everything and now it's going to start writing the files onto our usb drive now this process might take a few minutes what i'll do is i'll jump over to the next step the process is now complete we get a ready status over here we can go ahead and close this and i'm going to open up my explorer inside my file explorer i'm just going to go over to this pc and you can see that i have my usb listed in here as windows 7 and it has an icon over here for windows 7 ultimate and that's how you do it that's how you create a windows 7 bootable usb stick i hope you found this video useful if you did please smash that like button if you have any questions go ahead and put them in the comments below thank you for watching and i'll catch you on the next one